I just get the will to do it. I don't plan a photograph in advance. I work by impulse, not philosophy, no ideas. Not by the head, but by the eyes. Eventually, inspiration comes instant. It's the same as inspiration, and eventually it comes. Manuel Alves Bravo, or better known as Don Manuel, was a Mexican photographer. Born on February 4, 1902 in Mexico City. He left school at age 12 after his father passed away and took a job as an office boy and then as a clerk in government offices in order to help his family during financial difficult times. For 16 years, he worked as an accountant in the civil service where the revolution was taking place. However, because of the love of art his father and grandfather had, he started going to evening classes in painting, literature, and music. When he was only 21, he met Hugo Bremen, the noted German photographer who had come to Mexico on assignment and stayed. Bremen taught Mr. Alvarez Bravo advanced European photographic techniques, influencing him to purchase his first ever camera. Bremen also introduced him to another German born photographer resident in Mexico, Willem Kahlo. His daughter Frida Kahlo, the famed painter and wife of Theo Rivera, became a friend of Mr. Alvarez Bravo and sat for one of his finest portraits. It was largely self taught and other photographers played a major role in his development. He was also a friend of Pierre Foreign and then guarded photographers like Edward Weston, Tina Modotti, and Henry Cartier Brazon. Influenced by men, so many people and many topics, Mr. Alvarez Bravo's photographic combined eager acceptance of artistic influence from abroad with profoundly Mexican subject matter. André Breton, the leader of Surrealism in France, claimed the Mexican photographer as an exponent of his movement. In fact, one of Mr. Alvarez Bravo's best-known works, The Good Repetition Sleeping, a photograph of a naked young woman, busily sweated in bandages and sleep on a sidewalk with strings of cactus strewn about her, was produced as Breton's request for a Surrealist exhibition in Mexico City. Manuel Alvarez Bravo's photographs were also strikingly different. Some captured the contradiction between urban life and personal solitude. Others explored surrealist themes of that and the erotic. Still others explored perceptions of reality and the blurring of the line between photographer and subject. His photographs were mainly focused on the daily life of Mexicans after the revolution of 1910. The Mexican Revolution was a form of protest of the middle and lower class against dictator Porfirio Diaz. Diaz was an ambitious president keen to develop Mexico into an industrial and modernized country. While he worked on implanting a capitalist society, building factories, dams, and roads, the rural workers and peasants suffered greatly. Diaz allocated land once belonging to the people of Mexico to wealthy non-nationals to strengthen ties with the U.S. In addition to this, no Mexican was able to own land unless they had a formal legal title. Small farmers were in their early helpless. There was no other option but an uprising. The new government's aim was to establish a new era for Mexico and its new empowered people, and one of the ways they planned to do it was through art. After the Mexican Revolution, Alvarez Bravo's career emerged during a creative renaissance that was a reaction to a resulting shift in the political environment. Alongside the major uprising against then Mexican President Porfirio Diaz, brought forth by political revolutionaries such as Emiliano Zapata and Pancho Villa. Significant artists including Diego Rivera also came to prominence. Alvarez Bravo's work which evolved during this period addressed what curators Laura Gonzalez Bravo and Gerardo Mosquera identified as the country's gradual abandonment of rural life and traditional customs the rise of a post-revolutionary culture with international influences and exposure of a modern culture related to the urban maelstrom. The post-revolution encountered a movement through Mexican muralism that tried to unify the country. Headed by Los Tres Grandes, or by the Big Three, Diego Rivera, David Alfaro, and Jose Clemente Orozco. During this period, public buildings across the country were decorated with murals using a variety of artistic techniques including 
a caustica as well as fresco painting and a quantity of mosaic art, coinciding initially with similar propaganda campaigns in the Soviet Union. It was and remains one of the few nationwide political movements to occur in the West, inspiring others like the Chicano Moral Movement. It was through this movement that Manuel Álvarez Bravo and Diego Rivera began their friendship. Manuel Álvarez Bravo portrayed many different styles through his photographs, but one of his most notable photographs that has a great amount of recognition was a photograph in 1932 during a sugar strike in Tehuantepec, Mexico. In 1932, Alvarez Bravo worked briefly as a cameraman for Soviet filmmaker Sergei Eisenstein on his production Que Viva Mexico. During a day of filming, he heard a loud noise that sounded like fireworks to him. But when he arrived at the scene, he realized the noises were gunshots through a demonstration that the station by striking sugar mill workers. With only two friends left in his camera, he snapped an image of one of the workers lying dead on the ground which became known worldwide as the striking worker assassinated. As we get to play in the photograph, the first thing we see is the clear focal point, which in the image is the dead worker. The dead worker shows that the new government policy of freedom and democracy was an open criticism from the working class. We can see blood on his mouth, hair and clothes, and on the ground. We can also see his eyes open as if he was still alive or if he had just been shot. In this photograph, the use of black and white as the main colors just takes out gruesome images. Another of the rebels represents death through the incorporation of blood. For others, we can see strength since his eyes are still open as a sign of him trying to stay alive, and for his hand trying to do a fist with it. The work itself represents bravery as he stood up for what he wanted and went down the only way they could stop him. A flag is in the background, which for many, one of the dead workers then on echoes the flag's triangular shape. The use of elements in the principal design gives the image more of the dark side of life. It was probably on purpose that Manuel Alvarez used dark tones just to represent a scary scene or to represent death. The lack of colors just makes it less attractive to some, but for others, it just represents the time and period the photograph was taken. Overall, the photograph is what Manuel Alvarez was somewhat about. Explore serialist themes of death and the erotic. As an inspiring part time photographer, I love black and white photographs because it gives me a vibe that I'm living in the past. I chose this art because it's more of the realism of life, which is what we live through every day. I'm not attracted much of the colors in art, even though it gives it more complexity and more meaning. After reading about Manuel Abres Bravo, I love his artwork because it's all photographs which, which falls into realism. From my artwork, I try to imitate the original photograph of the assassinated worker as much as I could. I play the role of assassinated worker but with my twist of a young student shot dead in a bowling scene. While well, one of my friends took the photograph. I live in a city where violence is the main topic. I thought that since Manuel Álvarez Bravo tried to photograph Mexico's daily life, I wanted to showcase the life in Mexico, in Chicago. Both photographs represent one of Manuel Álvarez Bravo's themes in photographing. Death. Manuel Álvarez Bravo worked his way from being another Mexican photographer in the 1930s to becoming one of the most influential photographs in the world today. His unique way of approaching Photograph and making it happen makes him who he is today in the world of Mexican photography. Perhaps the most saucing and memorable interpretation of Mr. Alvarez Bravo's work came in a poem that Octavio Paz, the Mexican novel laureate, dedicated to the photograph. It reads in part, in part The eye thinks, the thought sees, the sight touches, the words burn. <laughs>